In this episode, I worship docking port magnets, I learn how to count to 14, and my station wobbles. Hey what's going on guys, my name's Lynx and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and in this episode, we are sending some more parts up to the station to prepare it on its journey to go to Kerbal. Today I'm sending up a small part, well I say small, it's not real is it, it's like half the size of the rocket. I'll take that back, we're sending up a fairly large part to the station, but at the moment it's going to play a fairly small role. Now, it doesn't have anything inside it at the moment, it's literally a probe core inside a cargo bay. That's what we're sending up, we're sending up a nice little cargo bay, I'm very excited to dock it to the station. I've actually put like the proper alignment things on so for those of you who've seen my last video where I was docking the probes to the station and having to line it all up I've actually got the alignment things on uh, you'll see you'll see what I mean I don't think this gravity turn is going to be the best Oh, that's a nice booster separation though don't mind me I'm very happy with how this craft looks and it did go under a couple of redesigns now you'll see what it's actually taken up so let's actually fix this gravity turn I mean look at that 66 kilometers I can just turn the engine off already but no there's no crew on this mission it's literally just a probe call or some reaction wheels. And it's, it's all fine and dandy, actually. I will be running... Never mind, I won't be running low on electric charge. I have tons of it. I have one solar panel inside in case I do. So this is what we are taking up. We're taking a Mark or three Mark III cargo bays. Inside here, we just have like a stupid probe thing just for controlling this. And some RCS tanks because I have RCS on this, which I should probably turn off. And as I was saying before, these are the alignment docking port things. Those are going to align properly with the other docking ports on the station, which means it will look very symmetrical and very nice. Anyway, without further ado, I think I need to get to orbit. And there we go, just leaving the debris behind over there. <laughs> this stage has just burnt out and I have 4,000 meters per second left on this one. This is a pretty a pretty efficient stage, don't mind me saying. I don't know what my thrust was. 0.7. That's pretty good, you know. Might have overbuilt it a little bit. I mean, 4,000 just to go to ash is not, it's not ideal. Let's be honest. It's probably a little, a little much, but all right, that 4,000 meters per second is probably going to come in useful because I just butchered that gravity turn. I, I completely messed up on that launch. <laughs> We're actually doing the burn in the daytime. How nice is that? And it looks like a pretty nice craft. Now on the station though, this will look really good. I'm just trying to make the station as big as possible, just for aesthetic purposes. Functionality wise, it's probably not going to do it a lot of good. I mean, is it going to have enough fuel to actually get to Kerbal eventually? Eh, it doesn't matter. More boosters, more fuel tanks. It'll be fine. I'll strap boosters to the back of it if we need to. <laughs> right, so whilst that's all happening, I'm going to deploy the solar panel. The one single solar panel to power this 75 ton craft. It's, it's, it's something like that. I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but it's fine. And at this point, this just looks stupid. I mean, I mean it doesn't look too bad, but it just it just looks stupid. <laughs> look, <laughs> you can tell that I just slapped a lot of reaction wheels in there and called it a day. <laughs> now, yeah, I did mess up that maneuver a little bit because I'm gonna be hitting Ash at this rate. So let's let's fix that. Oh my lord. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that I have really, really messed up that maneuver. But yep, that sure that sure does match the inclination of this station. It's around here somewhere. It's around. It's, it's one of these. It's one of the things in orbit. <laughs> I don't know. There we go. Uh, it's not quite efficient, but for inclination purposes, it does us a favor. And since I have plenty and plenty and tons of fuel to spare, I think I can get away with it. Now that whilst I'm warping to this next maneuver, uh, for those of you who've been keeping up with the cursed Kerbal Space Program series, basically where I increase the terrain heights, flip the atmosphere upside down, you name it. I have a really exciting one planned that I should hopefully be recording soon, and I'm really excited to bring that to you. So this is why this is a little bit of a shorter episode today. Just doing a little bit of maintenance on the station, but it, it has a good purpose. We're trying to get it ready to go to Kerbal, and when we get to Kerbal, I'm going to fill its cargo bay with God knows what, and I'm just going to I'm gonna send them all to all the planets. It's probably going to be a load of probes initially, and then later on we'll send individual missions over and stuff like that, you know. We just diversify the amount of planets we're visiting to. I do have some moons to still visit. I need to go to Eidos, which is around Gateway, and Ansia, I believe. After that, we will have visited everything, I think, except Fury. That's something I need to do as well. I need to rendezvous, but Bob! Bob, you're out again! What are you doing? <laughs> Bob's been out outside the station for I don't know how many episodes now, but <laughs> I thought I got him back in last time. Which which one is it? Which one am I actually rendezvousing? I think it's this one. It changes all the time. We've got Hydra's plane ship over there. We've got Bob Kerman. We've got 
the, the, the Comb One Lander for some reason. I'm sorry, but if your destination was Comb, it's on the other side of the solar system, my dude. All right, so I think I've targeted the right one. If not, it's in that sort of general area. There we go. We have a separation of 2.9 kilometers. Not quite right, but it's close enough. Now, the real question is, was that actually the right one to rendezvous with anyway? I don't know. We'll find out. Yes, yes, it was. There it is. Setter's target going nowhere. Separation is a little, little different, but 12.7 meters per second of a velocity difference isn't too bad. So let, let's sort that out, shall we? Hello there. Hello, hello, hello. Please don't blow up on me. Good evening. Going nowhere. Uh, I don't think I've forgotten about, about that meme, by the way. The gnomes will return soon. You just never, ever know when. They're meant to catch you off guard, you see. So if I if I time the gnomes just right, you'll 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 be lured into a false sense of security. All right. Now the problem I have currently is um, I'm gonna have to do a lot of moving around for the various crafts that are already docked to the station. All right. We have a nice little collision course. So let's just let that. Please don't look. Oh, it did it. It did the thing. I saw you. I. <laughs> it does that. See, every time I time up, don't do it. I have confidence that you won't do it again. Every single time I time warp next to this station, it wobbles. It just decides, nah, you know what? I'm just gonna wobble today. It's doing it. It's, it's freaking doing it. And if I, hmm, I, I knocked the station because I started, ah. <laughs> That's annoying. Ah, well, I mean, it's doing it again. <laughs> to be fair though, I did just bump it that time. <laughs> it seems to have gotten worse. It, it used to be like a random chance. Like, I, I don't know, a 10% chance that it would do it. But now it seems to do it like half the time. Because the thing is, if I quick save accidentally after it does that, I'm screwed. I have to launch it all again. The Kraken really don't like my station though. Now, it's module reconfigure time. The cargo bay is supposed to dock to these three prongs here. So, in order to do that, I have to undock two nodes. Firstly, I'll do this one. I'm not going to do them at the same time because they seem to be bumping around a little bit, but this one will dock to this docking port here instead. So it's time to do a little bit of reconfiguring. How much RCS do I have? Not much. 104. I have barely anything to play with to do this. I should, I should have made myself very well aware about how much I actually had. Look how many monopropellant tanks I actually have on this. I got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's like 8 on that one. There's like 12 there, 13, 14. 14 monopropellant tanks on this craft. Why? What, what was the... What, what, what was the point? We'll, we'll ignore that. We'll ignore that one. The, deci the design decision behind that one was obviously, uh, obviously mine, but shh, it's fine. Anyway, right, I need to focus on docking because this is going to be slightly misaligned. Ah, it's looking pretty good. I just love scenes like this in, in, especially in movies and stuff when they actually get stuff like docking right. In the Martian, I believe, they send a payload up to the station, the Hermes, and they do that one really well. They show that one really cool. I just love the scenes like this. Vast stations, things just going and docking with them. And it's, it's so cool, especially when movies get it right. In games, it's one thing. I mean, obviously, you'd expect it from something like Kerbal Space Program, stuff like this. Vast ships docking with each other. Also, uh, why am I missing a relay? Why, why, why am I... I swear to God. <laughs> Why am I missing a relay? Anyway, let's let's just dock. There we go. We docked. And the station went from looking nice to looking fucking disgusting. <laughs> right now, you thought that looked horrific. Look at this. Now, this is what I call awful. There's actually no monopropellant on this. I have five monopropellant. No, I have to dock again. This one's going to be a, not a doozy. This one's going to be a, a, an oopsie doopsie. Me and my zero monopropellant. Mm, I see. <laughs> I have one shot at doing this, and it looks like I'm going to be missing it anyway. <laughs> Do you have SAS, though? Come on, please. Just the Magnets. Oh, praise the magnets. Praise the magnets. Yes. Okay, right. Um, yeah, that's pr probably not the best way to go about this one, actually. <laughs> See, if I had 15 monopropellant, I might be able to do it. Yeah, let's try it. 15 monopropellant. See, I could just dock, like, another crew thing to it, but I've <laughs> taken all the crew back, so I can't. There's really not much I can do. Now then, I am going to dock with this port down here. That one. That one's my target. This is the one that we're going to be docking to. 30, 13? Bro, I've used barely any. And now I'm on 12. 11.4. I'm just turning monopropellant off at this rate. It seems to be using it to balance me out when it should really just be using SAS. But, ah, well, there we go. Zero. <laughs> Zero meters per second. I'm going to have to push the station a little bit to get myself a little little bit of backwards movement, downwards movement at this point. But uh, it's not going to it's not gonna clear the ring, is it? That'd be a fat no. Oh, just about. Just about. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've seen. 
This is just the dumbest thing I've probably done. And now I've just got to make sure that I do this properly, good and proper. Because at the moment, because I've been pushing myself on the station, I have taken myself on a course that I really don't want. Five mono... No, this is just not... This is just not going to work. 4.8 mono propellant. Actually, that's looking pretty close. You know, that's not looking too bad, is it? It's a very simple way to do this. Just hope the magnets work. Me and my 3.4 mono propellant left. <gasps> the magnets. Yes. Yes. I think I've done it with 15 mono propellant in the tank. Oh, well, that was a tricky one. I think we're about to dock. Nice. It just looks awful at this point. It used to look fine. It used to look nice. It might look a little bit nicer with this part on. So let's dock that now that the uh, the station is now free. Um, right. I don't want to make any bad decisions here. I need to decouple that, right? That seems to all go fine and dandy. Nice. All right. We have plenty of mono propellant on this one, which is a change. The problem is my controls are reversed. Up and down, left and right, they're all reversed. Forwards and backwards is fine, though. It's just because I'm controlling it like a stinky but this is looking good you know that looks nice stuff like this is really good to watch especially in like just anything space related just seeing stuff like this happen it's just great this is why one of the reasons why i started the beyond home series and if if you're as mildly long-term viewer it, it depends on what sort of time scale you mean but like halfway through the series i think i went to lua at some point and i was like we're gonna build some thick stations we're gonna build some thick motherships and we're gonna go to thick planets it's gonna be great and that's exactly what we're doing now we're building some thick stations and with a little bit of luck this should dock now i'm gonna slow myself down a tiny bit just so that i can actually line up with the target a little better there no Oh, no, I went way out. Boom, instant dock. Now you'll love to see it. Yeah, let's rotate the station so it's the right way up. Let's open all of this. Oh, isn't that just brilliant? Isn't that just brilliant? Just to see, you know, that's just cool to watch. A massive station like this. I'm not a fan of the thing sticking out of it, I'll be honest, but it, it just kind of adds to the aesthetic, right? At least it's semi-symmetrical. The problem is I'm still missing this flipping communications thing. I don't know what happened to it, but it's kind of gone. Maybe I'll put something else there instead, you know, because this is technically symmetrical with these two here, the docking bay here, and then I can just stick something else down there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, a, when if I get, like, better antenna at all, then I'll probably put a better one down there, and it'll look fine. Oh, I've just done all of that, and I didn't even deploy the solar panels. That's a shame. Look at that. Look at them deploying now. That's great. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. If you enjoyed that, please do help the channel out. Help me out by leaving a like, subscribing if you enjoyed the content and if you want to see more. And make sure to check out some of my other videos. For example, the Cursed Kerbal Space Program playlist will be linked at the end of the video. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.